Okay, so how do you always have your shit together? Like, do you ever get tired of following through on stuff? Or is it like one of those things that drives you where you're like, I can't sleep at night until I do this? Like, is it ever a burden to for you? Or do is it like, does it bring you great joy to like cross something off your list? So I've learned to not take on more than I can handle. Mm. And I've put myself in a much better pace because yes, it used to burden me and it used to cut into my sleep time. Mm -hmm. I had no social life for a period of my time in the industry. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm, I became a minimalist and I got rid of 75% of my belongings and moved into an apartment and simplified my life. I only take on what I really want to be invested in. And I've spent more time, whether it's virtually, even during the pandemic, FaceTime or with people in the past two and a half years than I had in 20 years. Mm -hmm. More quality time with my friends. More every night I'm on a FaceTime for two hours with a different friend. Um, Just connecting with people because before I had so much on my to-do list and as the person that I am, I had to get it done. So what would sacrifice would be me, Mm -hmm. my being. So now I just pick my pleasure and the things that I'm committed to, I commit, but I say no to a lot more than I ever have. Mm-hmm. And I allow myself days like where I'm going to get a massage and then I'm going to go home and either watch some horrible binger of like 90 Day Fiance, some trash TV, mm-hmm. or I'm going to read. But I will take a day where I don't talk to anybody and I just want to be doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So from the exterior, it looks like I'm working all the time. But really, I've just paced myself to kind of perfect the projects that I'm doing Mm -hmm. and not overwhelm myself with things that I really don't want to do. You know it's a no. When someone asks you and you're like, I really don't want to, but I'm going to because I need the work or I'm going to because I like them or I'm going to. I don't have those ties in New York. I had them here. Yeah. See, I struggle with that so much. And that's something that I've been thinking about a lot because I I mean, look, I'm fortunate enough that. I built a brand and a name that people come to me for stuff, especially since I did the podcast. I can't tell you how many people come to me. They want me in their documentary. They want to interview me for this. They want to interview me for that. But they don't want to pay you. Of course not. Which I understand. Like, you don't get paid for documentaries. Like, I get that. But I can't do every single document. Or I have people who just want to interview me and ask me questions about a documentary that they're doing. But they don't want, I'm not going to be in it. They're using you for their homework. I actually do now say to them, if you'd like to pay me a consulting fee, I'll answer all the questions you want. But my time is worth something. And they're appalled. Yeah. But I've had two pay me. Yeah. So I got to say no to 20. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. And it's like, and and I, and I hear that because I don't want to become that person because I remember when I was trying to get somewhere and I needed advice from somebody, you know, um, if they wanted a consulting fee, like what I would think about them, but you're right. Because like you get to a point where I cannot say yes to everything. No, Like I just like it cut. And then, especially now that I have a child, like if I'm going to spend this day, like work for sitting down with you to be interviewed for your documentary and you're not even going to put me in it, which, you know, that might be valuable for me in a way where I would get like FaceTime and sure, publicity. Sure. Um, then I can't work on these other things that I really need to get done to make me money. Right. So it's just like, and I think that's something I didn't really understand until I'm at this place now. So it's I tough. am trying to say no to more things, but like in and a kind The documentaries way. too, quite a few times I have done things for people and then I don't like the tone of how the documentary, yeah, totally. like they come to me with this idea, like it's going to be a positive take on the industry yeah. and we're going to talk about female empowerment and this and that. And then four months into these weekly phone calls they want you on and can you give me this person's phone number and you don't want to give it so you got to reach out to that person yeah. and ask them if it's okay. Four months down, it's like, oh no, this is going to be about agents and the horrible things that they've done to people. We've decided to, and I'm like, that's not what I need to be giving my time to. I don't mm-hmm. want to burn bridges. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to think I'm part of a negative conversation, Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people. And, you know, in journalism, they do pay their leads a lot of times Mm -hmm. because they're going to make money selling this product to Netflix or they're going to make money. You don't want to pay any of us, but yet you want me to be at your disposal for eight hours a week to talk. Nah, nah. I, yeah, I just say I gave that up for Lent and I'm really sorry I decided not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think the the time management and the saying no, saying no and trying to kind of simplify your your life is, is something that I was forced 
to deal with um, when I had a kid because I had suddenly had less time. I didn't want to work 24 seven. You, you know, shouldn't. I wanted to have time to see her. And you also need time to take care of you, yeah. whether it's doctor's appointments or whether whatever it may be that you want to do for you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we put that aside to do all these little things. Mm-hmm. We put us aside. Yeah. Take care of everybody else. Was there anything in particular that like, did you feel like this was a monumental shift um, to your new way of thinking and your way of, um, you know, creating those boundaries or is it just something that like kind of you slowly started to adapt as time went on? It was really a monumental shift of my mindset. I felt more empowered. I felt stronger. I felt satisfied with what I was doing and didn't need the extra Mm because all that really becomes is extra. And yes, you can get a little leverage out of being in a good documentary, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it comes out and you really don't. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, Oh my gosh, I gave this time. And I just felt this feeling of if I'm going to be doing something, And it's going to be just volunteer work. I'd rather do actual volunteer work. I'd rather raise money for a charity. I'd rather be a part of the group at MoMA that helps raise money for something. I'd rather do something that's just feeding my soul instead of feeding somebody else's project. Mm -hmm. And then the learning to say no was just once I started doing it, how good it felt to have more time for my people, Mm -hmm. how good it felt to celebrate my friendships and be like, man, this is just so great. And yes, I'd love to help you with this, but I have a friend's wedding. And I'm not going to cancel it. I want to go a day early to hang out with everybody. Things that I never did before. Yeah. I just feel like I'm living. Yeah. What do you find that you value the most in life right now? My relationships, for sure. And it 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 can bring me to tears to realize how little I valued them for so many years of my life. Yeah. Because I didn't have strong ones. Yeah. And now that I do, it's just, it changes your life. Yeah. You know, I think so much, so much of what we seek in life, money, success, career, cars, we think is what's going to lead us to good relationships, right? Because people are going to like us. People are going to find us valuable because we have those things. Yeah. But then we find that the people who do like us because we have those things are not the kind of people who value people. Right. And it's very empty they love things instead of people. Yeah. And this expression that the minimalists use that I love is use things, love people. Mm -hmm. Stripping down my life, the hardest thing to get rid of was my car. Mm. Because a car is a sign of independence, right? Mm. We started driving. And as soon as you got a car, you were like, I can just go take a drive. I can get away from my parents. When I was young, we could put a handful of change in our gas tank and go somewhere. And I remember sitting at the dealership, turning in my car before I moved to New York, thinking like, I am absolutely stripped down to nothing. There's nothing identifying me as being different than anybody else. A better car made you feel like you were better than somebody else sitting in traffic. And now I don't have a better car. I don't Mm -hmm. have a car. Yeah. And I think that like getting to New York, December of 2019, the world closing in March of 2020 and me adapting to like having no stuff was wild because then it was like, oh, I have all this free time because I'm not managing my stuff. So now I'm just going to talk to my friends. What do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you have free time? Talk to your friends. And I just realized these friendships that I've had. And though I enjoyed them, I didn't value them. And I didn't Mm -hmm. realize how much better it felt to talk to somebody for two hours than it felt to go to the mall Mm -hmm. and buy a bunch of shit Mm -hmm. or to go shopping or to have my car. Yeah, Stripping myself of everything really showed me who I am. Do you think the pandemic had like a big, like how did the pandemic affect your life specifically? I think becoming a minimalist right before the pandemic made my life a lot easier. Mm. If I was still living here and I had four bathrooms, I'd have been worried. What if one leaks? I got to have people come in. Do they wear masks? Do you COVID test them? Like all these things and taking care of a big place. I didn't have any responsibility. So I was on the city bike Every day in the middle of the street in New York City, there were no cars. There was no noise. You would just meet up with other people riding bikes. And there'd be like little bike gangs of different age group people just meeting up. All right, we'll meet up at Times Square. Okay, we'll meet up at the water. We'll meet. And then there's like 25 of you. And you're just tooling around the city on a bike like a child. Yeah. Um, I really lived out my most freeing time. I felt no guilt. I'm not saying no to anybody. I don't have to say no to an event. I don't have to say no to do anything. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. 
At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q and A's, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.